relations and stakeholder relations with the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. Thanks for coming to our event as we kick off our intensive carbon monoxide safety awareness in parts of Eastern Ontario, uh, communities of Kingston, Brockville, Gananoque, Smith Falls, Perth, and some of the surrounding communities. We have a number of people who've joined us today and thank you very much for your time and for being here. And I think it shows how important this issue is to uh, municipality who's who's joined us today from the uh, municipality of Gananoque. And we have uh, fire services from Addington Highlands, Gananoque, uh, Leeds and Lanark Highlands and possibly some others, so I apologize if I've missed that you've joined. As I said, we have a few speakers and then we'll take questions. Speakers from the fire department, from TSSA and John Jinek from the Hawkins Jinek Foundation. We're going to start with Bonnie Rose and I can profile her on the screen here. Bonnie Rose is the president and chief executive officer of the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. Thanks, Alex. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Oh, perfect. Just checking. Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our virtual carbon monoxide event. First and foremost, I would like to thank the group of safety experts who were involved with our event today. Gananoque Fire Chief Gord Howard, John Jinyak from Hawkins Jinyak Foundation for CO Education, TSSA's own Stu Seaton, Investigator of Fuel Safety, and John Ward from First Alert. I'm really glad to be here today with this group of individuals, all of whom are so incredibly dedicated to public safety. TSSA is Ontario's provincial regulator for fuel safety, so I'm particularly honored to be here today as we join forces with like-minded, focused safety partners. This event is another gratifying reflection of TSSA's mantra and recognition that safety is a shared responsibility. As TSSA transitions towards becoming a modernized outcome-based regulator, our focus is on safety outcomes, and our goal is to use our expertise and strong partnerships to achieve positive safety outcomes for the people of Ontario. We use data to understand risk and to shape our approach to safety oversight. Data informs how we develop programs, such as our carbon monoxide public education campaign, to ensure we target risks and can reduce harm. Our mission at TSSA is to enhance safety in Ontario, where people live, work and play. To do this, it's often a matter of teamwork. That means working with other safety partners, like fire and emergency services, to manage incidents as they occur and to learn from them. We want to find ways to prevent and reduce the likelihood of incidents repeating themselves in the future. Some of the ways TSSA aims to reduce accidents is by registering contractors and certifying tradespeople who install and service equipment. Equipment is safe, but only when it is installed and maintained by workers who are current with all safety codes and standards and are aware of the proper safety procedures and precautions. In addition, TSSA develops public safety programs such as this one, our Working Together in Our Community Think Safe public education campaign. We aim to bring attention to potentially harmful situations in which human behavior is a primary root cause of serious life-threatening incidents. Today, we are talking about carbon monoxide exposure. In Ontario, more than 65% of all injuries and death due to carbon monoxide have occurred in homes due to a lack of regular maintenance of fuel burning appliances. While Ontario is among the safest regions in Canada, TSSA is fully committed to continually raising awareness of potential safety risks and ways to prevent them. Thank you for being part of this discussion today. This campaign is one of many. Working together with our safety partners, our goals are clear. We want to raise people's awareness of the risks associated with carbon monoxide in people's homes and enhance their understanding of the actions they can take to protect themselves and their family. The safety approach is straightforward. Inspection of fuel burning, burning appliances by TSSA certified fuel technicians and regular testing of certified CO alarms. The campaign will run for two weeks from March 15th to 30th in various communities across Eastern Ontario. 
Residents can expect to receive life-saving details about carbon monoxide exposure delivered directly to their mailbox and through advertising in local media. I'd like to thank Gananoque Fire Chief Gord Howard, the Hawkins Gignac Foundation for CO Education, and First Alert for their support in kicking off this important community safety initiative. A special thanks to all the members of fire services in Gananoque and beyond for their tireless efforts to keep our residents safe in all ways, carbon monoxide included. My hope is that this campaign heightens awareness in your community and influences behaviors that will ultimately save lives. Thank you. Thank you very much for your remarks. That was Bonnie Rose, who's the President and Chief Executive Officer of the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. Um, and now I'm going to hand it over to Gananoque Fire Chief Gord Howard, um, and I'll just make sure that Gord is spotlighted on the screen. Takes a minute to come up. Over to you, Gord. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Gananoque Fire Department is uh, very excited and proud and honored to be a part of this. Uh, event and the events that uh, occurred across Ontario. Um, this campaign is essential to awareness and I think awareness is a key part of this. Um, we talk about smoke alarms and, and a lot of prevention aspects related to fire and uh, this is equally as important to community safety and the safety of uh, people across Ontario. So um, like I said, we're very excited to be a part of this and uh, anything that we can do now and in the future. Uh, I know specifically here in Gananoque, we've made it a a key priority to um, have CO alarms be as important and at the forefront, uh, just like smoke alarms. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that's that's good to hear. And uh, clearly, uh, fire departments have to respond to these types of incidents. And so, you have that familiarity about what's what's important for people to do in their homes. Um, so that was. Fire Chief of Gananoque, Gord Howard, thank you. And now I'm going to ask John Janek to speak. Uh, John is with the Hawkins Janek Foundation, and I'm just going to invite him up to the podium here while I spotlight him on the screen. Uh, there we go, we can see you. Over to you, John. Okay, thank you, Alexandra. Good morning, everyone. I'm honored to participate on this panel today. I want to thank Chief Howard and Bonnie Rose from TSSA for hosting this virtual event. We are all here to help Kananaqua area residents stay safe from the risk of carbon monoxide. Uh, for me, the issue of carbon monoxide safety is very personal. As a firefighter with the Brantford Fire Department for 34 years, I responded to countless emergencies, both fire and carbon monoxide related. However, none of them prepared me for the loss of four of my family members in December of 2008 uh, during a carbon monoxide poisoning. My niece, Lori Hawkins, an OPP officer in Woodstock, her husband, Richard, and their two children, Cassandra and Jordan, all died when a block chimney vent forced deadly CO from their gas fireplace to seep back into their home. They did not have a carbon monoxide alarm. I know what you're thinking. As a firefighter, I should have made sure they had a CO alarm. And you're right. That still haunts me to this day. But you know what? I didn't have one either. Back in 2008, there wasn't much awareness of carbon monoxide and the deadly consequences of this poisonous gas. The horrible accident inspired me to create the Hawkins Act Foundation for Carbon Monoxide Education, both to honor Lori's memory and to do my best to make sure that no other family ever has to endure the suffering that my family has, especially from something so preventable. Since, since its inception, the foundation has been committed to public education and awareness campaigns right across the country. We will not stop until every Canadian is protected from the silent killer. As you may know, there's a reason carbon monoxide is called the silent killer. You, humans can't see it, smell it, or taste it. A working seal alarm is the only way to detect this poisonous gas. In this country, there are hundreds of emergency room visits due to non-fatal exposure to carbon monoxide each year, and more than 50 reported deaths due to CO. 
These are senseless losses of life that can be prevented by homeowners who take two simple steps. Number one, have all your fuel burning appliances inspected and maintained every year by a TSSA certified technician. Install an approved carbon monoxide alarm outside all sleeping areas and test replace them when the manufacturer directions say so. My niece Lori served her entire career in public safety. Even her, her passing, she continues to bring focus on the love and resilience of family and attention to the importance of carbon monoxide alarms. I know Lori wants me, with your help, to continue carbon monoxide education. I can't change what happened to my family, but I can help make it sh sure it doesn't happen to anyone else's family. I often feel Lori tapping me on the shoulder and encouraging me to go on. This is Lori's legacy and events like this even virtual ones, are critical in raising and maintaining awareness of the dangers of carbon monoxide. Thanks again to Chief Howard and the entire Gananoque Fire Department team for their great work, and to Bonnie Rose, Alexandra, and everyone at TSSA for their leadership and excellent direct mail campaign to educate homeowners. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much. That was John Janek from the Hawkins Janek Carbon Monoxide Foundation, and thank you for sharing that very difficult and personal story, um, but uh, to help us all understand how important carbon monoxide awareness is. I'm now going to ask Stu Seaton to speak. Stu is an investigator with the Technical Standards and Safety Authority, TSSA, and like many of the fire departments that are attending today, he also has to attend uh, to carbon monoxide incidents when they happen. And uh, he's going to speak and share some remarks right now. Thanks. Thank you, Alex. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. And I thank you again for joining us. First, I would like to say how much I appreciate the work of all the fire and emergency service people who work so hard every day to keep all of us safe. Their efforts and those of frontline workers over this past year demonstrate how committed they are to health and safety of Ontarians. I also want to thank John and the Hawkins Gignac Foundation for their endless hard work and passion that they devote to carbon monoxide safety. John's story is so compelling and tragically emphasizes why we are here today. Carbon monoxide is a leading cause of accidental poisoning in Ontario every year, but together we can reduce the risks for our families and our loved ones. In my over 20 years of being involved in fuel safety, I have investigated far too many incidents involving carbon monoxide, and unfortunately, the majority have occurred in homes across Ontario, and most, if not all, could have been prevented through annual inspections by certified fuel technicians. Let me give you just one example, and unfortunately, it gets repeated in all types of homes far too often. One that happened not long ago resulted in me being called out to investigate an incident at a permanent mobile home in Trent Hills area. The initial indications were strongly pointing to it being a carbon monoxide related fatality. Sure enough, and sadly, that was the case. This permanent mobile home had an attached sunroom with normal cottage type furniture, including a large outdoor table. The issue, the vinyl tablecloth, which hung down from the table, had partially covered the exhaust vent and air intake for the home's propane furnace. So when the deceased operated the furnace to dry out some damp cushions, the furnace, partially plugged by the tablecloth, produced a significant amount of carbon monoxide, in fact, over 4,000 ppm. Consider that sustained exposures at even levels around 150 to 200 ppm can cause serious health effects, including death. The gentleman was overcome in a matter of minutes and deceased at the scene. No carbon monoxide detector was found. Could this have been prevented? The simple answer is yes. Getting annual inspections and regular maintenance for fuel burning appliances, and that means all of them, not just your furnace, 
are essential to reduce risks like those that occurred in this incident. We all understand that our busy lives are challenging and all of us try to do our best. So it's not about assigning blame. It's about providing vital carbon monoxide safety information and reminding people about important safety routines that are critical to keeping them and their families safe. When it comes to carbon monoxide safety in our homes, we all have a role to play. It's a shared responsibility. I can tell you that my colleagues and I at TSSA come to work every day with one goal in mind, and that's public safety. We'll do everything we can, but we need the help of all Ontarians to beat the silent killer. It's about defense in depth. That is two things we all need to do. One, get that annual inspection by a TSSA certified technician, and two, install and test your certified carbon monoxide alarms and replace them as indicated by the manufacturer. Campaigns like this one recognize the need to provide key safety information to residents. I'm honored today to be involved and work alongside individuals like the Gananoque Wave Fire Chief Gord Howard and his department, John and his foundation, and of course, First Alert. Please look out for the crucial carbon monoxide safety materials that will be arriving in your mailboxes over the coming days. Thank you and stay safe. Thank you very much. Uh, that was Stu Seaton, who's an investigator with TSSA, the Technical Standards and Safety Authority. And we do have some time for questions and a presentation. Uh, the first, before we get to questions, and when you do have, if you do have a question, you can put your hand up and uh, you can unmute yourself. I'll call on you. But I do want to also acknowledge John Ward, who's here with us today. He's a technical expert from First Alert who make carbon monoxide detectors and alarms, uh, which is really one of the key features to saving lives and protecting the public uh, in their homes from carbon monoxide poisoning. So, um, and First Alert has made a special contribution today that we will be highlighting at the end of this event and not, not too long. And as I said, right now, we are open for questions and people can give me a moment. I'll just scroll through the list here. Here's the question. Uh, and maybe to get us started, I, I would actually like to ask John Janak, um, how does the rest of your family feel about the work you do on carbon monoxide uh, it's so deeply personal? And having a, an Ontario law passed in your family's name and maybe just Tell us briefly about uh, what's special about Ontario. Well, my family is uh, very proud of the work that we're doing because it is an honour of our, our passed away family members. Uh, of course, you know that the family in North Bay, the mother and father have now passed, but uh, her Lori's brother and sister are very proud to be a part of this, but of course they're very private. So that's how I ended up getting pushed forward to do the work of the foundation, but uh, our family is very proud of it. And to have the, the uh, law uh, named in our, honor of our family uh, is a tremendous uh, honor for us. And the family certainly appreciates uh, what has happened in the past and the law being named in our name is, is, is a really rewarding uh, fact for everybody to see. It's been, okay. a, it's been a difficult road, as you know, and it's been very emotional, but uh, I, I'm, I'm certainly well, uh, very proud of the work we've been doing as well, and all our volunteers. So um, I'm very proud of what's happening. Okay, thank you for that, John. Um, just checking to see if there's any other questions, and maybe I, I will ask one more um, because we're gonna, very shortly move on to presentation uh, with the alarms and I will also actually take this moment again to thank everybody who's joined us and we have officials from the municipality of Gananoque, the Gananoque fire prevention officer, um, fire chief from Addington Highlands, Casey Cuddy, uh, Mike Pryor is 
the acting fire chief in Leeds and Jean Richardson is the fire chief in Lanark Highlands. And so our campaign is reaching households um, across these communities in Eastern Ontario. So before we hand over the alarms, I will just ask John Ward who's joined us from First Alert. Um, uh, can you tell us sort of what's changing with carbon monoxide alarms these days? Are they are they uh, the same? Are they sort of modernizing? Are there such things as smart alarms? Thank you. I really appreciate being um, part of this. And I'd also like to thank the TSSA and the fire departments for the work you're doing. Uh, the carbon monoxide message is complicated and there's a lot of misconceptions out there. So we really appreciate all the stakeholders um, efforts in helping um, promote this. Um, one of the, there's a couple new things as, as far as it comes with uh, smoke alarms and carbon monoxide alarms. Uh, with smoke and CO alarms, uh, any new home built after 2015 now has to have a, a strobe light. Um, so that helps people with uh, hearing impairments um, to let them know that uh, an alarm has gone into uh, alarm. And then some of the other new things is we have probably about three or four alarms um, that will alert a smart device if they go off. So if they sense carbon monoxide or smoke, you can send a message to your phone or to your tablet and um, depending on the one you get, you might even build it. Uh, it might you might even be told what location uh, the alarm is in that is sending you the um, uh, warning. So those are some of the new things that are are coming out in in this channel. Okay. Uh, and then uh, one question I kind of wanted to ask Stu is: we often hear that. And when people hear of carbon monoxide poisoning, they they automatically think of their furnace. Now, in the many people that I've dealt with, I've heard probably even more than furnace that a water heater can be an issue. But I wonder what Stu's um, experience has been as far as other causes of carbon monoxide. Well, John, that's that's a really good question because a lot of people do seem to fixate on the furnace and the furnace only. Um, boy, it couldn't be any further from the truth. Um, anything that burns a fuel will produce carbon monoxide. And I really don't care what that fuel is. Wood, candles, diesel, natural gas, uh, you name it. If it combusts, it will produce carbon monoxide. So we can't just fixate on a furnace. We have to fixate on a multitude of things, barbecues, boilers, unit heaters, cars, generators, anything that burns a fuel. It's not necessarily all on how the unit works. It's where the unit is employed, where it's utilized. Um, if we get a power outage using a generator inside a garage, you've got carbon monoxide. If we have uh, uh, an issue where a barbecue is being used incorrectly, you've got carbon monoxide. So, John, it's just not the furnace, any fuel. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I don't see any more questions at this time. And so uh, we're gonna end with a presentation and I'm going to ask John Janak uh, again to to take the floor. Thanks again. At this time, I'd like to draw attention to the donation of first alert carbon monoxide alarms being presented to Chief Howard. They were generous, generously donated by First Alert Canada in support of this education blitz. Gananoque firefighters will provide them to families in the community who might not otherwise be in a position to purchase an alarm themselves, especially in light of COVID-19. Thank you, First Alert. I am happy to present them to Chief Howard on your behalf. And I'm just gonna, Chief Howard, if you have anything you could say there, that the phone's ringing. <laughs> Sorry about that. 
It's okay. I think it's the fire department's allowed to answer the phone if you have to. <laughs> so I'd like to thank uh, John uh, for um, his story and, and the uh, work that he's done. Um, thank you very much for these generous, the generous donation of these uh, smoke or the CO alarms. Um, I'd like to thank First Alert uh, and I'd like to thank Bonnie and Alexandra and TSSA for the organizing this event and uh, for all the hard work that they've done in the community and specifically uh, with the town of Gananoque. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Um, that's Chief Gord Howard from Gananoque Fire Department. So that concludes our event. Thank you again, everybody for attending. We're gonna have a recording and of course, sending it a release with uh, contact information so you can contact any of us that spoke here today and happy to provide you facts or answer your questions and that's it have a great rest of the afternoon everybody